Okay, so I'm hearing most people say negative 2 and x equals 1. Is anybody willing to come do it? Yeah, come on up. <clears throat> Let's see if you did it the same way I did it. Here we go. Talk us through what you did. Uh, I minus the 4 first, so we have the 2x squared plus 2x minus 4 equals 0. Then I factored out the 2, so then it was 2x squared plus x minus 2 equals 0. And then I factored it, which then the factors came out to be x plus 2 and x. Minus one. And then you have to set them to zero. So it's like plus two equals zero. One equals zero. So then x equals negative two and one. Perfect. How many of you went about it that exact same way? Okay, awesome. That great, thank you. Your explanation was perfect. Like perfect step. So my question for you is, why doesn't that two affect our solution? Yeah, there's no x, there's no variable. Very good. How many of you uh, didn't factor out the 2 in the beginning and um, started here and then drop and break? How many of you did that? Yeah. Awesome, you did that. So then when you did that, you're... Oh. So, anyways, what did you get as your factors? Um, no, what did you get as your factors? Sorry? Like when you factored it out before you solved, what did you get? 2x plus 4, that's what I'm looking for, and x minus 1. Okay, perfect. So they factored it like this, and they said each of those equal to 0. 2x plus 4 equal to 0, and x minus 1 equal to 0. Solving for x, we get x is equal to 1. Right here we would subtract 4, so we have 2x is equal to negative 4, then divide by 2. So x is equal to negative 2. Now you got the same answers, you went about it differently, and that's great. Does everybody see? Okay, awesome. Okay, great. This method would have been just quicker, but you I don't care how you get the right answer as long as you get the right answer. Awesome, very good. All right, so we're starting our new unit today. I'm going to be honest with you. This is my one of my literally favorite units to teach all year. It's just awesome. It's, it's Honestly, if you put in a lot of effort into this unit, it's going to be one of our easier units if you put in effort. Okay, so we're just going to get started. A couple of things that you need to know. Um, I'm doing all of my examples off your worksheet, so that'll be nice, um, and we're going to plow through this worksheet. Um, make sure you're asking a lot of questions, and don't be afraid to ask, because I think that sometimes I get going so fast when people don't dare say, wait a minute, what did you mean by that, or whatever, so make sure you do that. So, uh, first of all, we have learned this in the past, but we'll kind of treat it like we haven't learned it before. Rational means can be written as a fraction. We just did our rational unit. It was all dealing with fractions. Today we're going to be talking about rational exponents for a second. So a rational exponent is an exponent that's a fraction. We've seen this this year so far as well. Um, so does everybody see how we have base x raised to the two-thirds power? This is a rational, and it, um, it can also be written as a radical. So everybody, I want on your paper you to draw a picture of a, this flower, similar. So really, this is a little thing I even refer back to it in my mind today. This is a little trick I'm going to teach you, but first get your picture down. So draw some roots at the bottom, draw a picture of your flower on the side, like take some notes. So if you don't have a picture of a flower drawn on your worksheet, I'm not going to give you full credit. Because it's an easy point, okay? Go off to the side, draw a little picture of a flower. The thing, key features are the roots and the power. So draw a little picture real quick, and then I'll explain. So, guys... You know how we can rewrite, yes. Okay, so guys, fractional exponents can also be written as a radical. So you know how we just talked about how in a quadratic, if you write it in standard form, sorry, standard form, that's no different than in factored form, correct? They're the same thing, just different forms. That's the same thing with a radical. So we can take this rational exponent and rewrite it as a radical. Now here's the trick. Rational exponents have the power on top. So everybody, this is our power. 2 is our power. So this is x to the second power, and then power comes from the top. So our sun is our power shining down on the top of our flower. So power is on top like the sun. Then roots are on the bottom. 
roots are on the bottom, so just like on a flower, how there's roots on the bottom, we know whatever's on bottom is the root. So our root would be a cube root. Now we're gonna have a lot of new lingo today, so don't be offended if I correct like how you say something. Like if people say second root, I'll say that's a square root, and it's not me getting mad, it's helping me helping you figure out how to say these things correctly. So I'm gonna be doing a lot of correction today, and that's totally fine. We need to learn the new lingo. Okay, so everybody, let's rewrite this as a radical instead of a rational exponent. So let's look right here. So everybody, we just talked about how roots are on bottom like our flower. So this is a cube root. Do you see how I knew this was a cube root, everybody? Roots are on bottom. And then the power is on top, so it's the cube root of x to the second power. So that's how we can rewrite it. Now we need to be able to go back and forth and understand that they're literally equal. It's just one form, and then this is a different form. Apples, you squish the apple, it's still an apple, just a different form of an apple. Um, now there's benefits to having rational exponents, there's benefits for radicals, and we'll talk about the benefits to both later. Does everybody understand? Let's start practicing this on your worksheet. Here we go. Number one, we're rewriting this rational exponent as a radical. So the first thing you do is identify your root. Roots are on bottom like, the, uh, like our flower. So what root will this be? A cube root, correct? So write in the cube root. The power's on top, so it'll be m to the second power. Everybody good with that? Now you might see it written like this, the cube root of m to the second power, that's the same thing as this. It just, it me, it's literally just written a little bit different. It's still m raised to the second power, it's all this stuff raised to the second power, so we're good, if we see it either way. Okay, now this is not on your worksheet, but I want you to look up here. What do we know about negative exponents? We need to do what? Flip it over a fraction, way to go. So we take the base, we flip it over a fraction, so we have n to the positive two-thirds on bottom. What's on top? One, so we have one over n to the two-thirds. So if I said rewrite that as a radical, one is one on top, and then on bottom we'd have the cube root of n to the second power. So do you see the only difference is there's a one on top? Okay. And that's not on your worksheet, I was just showing you what a negative exponent will look like. Flip it over a fraction, write it just like we did when it wasn't flipped over a fraction. Okay, number two, rewrite it. Ready, set, go. Okay, what is this? The what root? Square root of n to the fifth power. Now notice something, and I will fix you a ton on this unit. I did not write a two in there. If you have a two, I'll say to you, remember, it goes without being said, if there's nothing in there, it's a square root. Does everybody understand? So if you put a two in there, just erase it. We're getting, we're learning new things. So if it's just like this, that does mean a square root. There's no such thing as a once root. There's no such thing as a once root. So it says it's square root. Okay, awesome. All right, now what would my answer be? You should be able to tell me this right off the bat. One over square root of n to the fifth. Good. Okay, number three. Couple things to notice. This one has two bases. You've got to look very carefully. Is both 10 and x both raised to the fifth power? Is both 10 and both x under the square root? Yes, so parentheses are everything on this. We're going to have a square root. Both 10 and x are both raised to the fifth power. If you don't put parentheses, it is not the same thing. I'm going to write out the wrong answer so you can see the difference. So this would be considered wrong. Now here's why. That would be saying 10 is under a square root, yes, and x to the fifth is under a square root, yes, but this would be saying that 10 is not raised to the fifth power because there's no parentheses saying it was. This would be considered wrong for this problem. Okay, next one, we would just flip it over a fraction, correct? Same thing, 1 over the square root of both 10, I'm writing on my on the side, 10x to the fifth. Yes. Okay, number four, rewrite it, go. So this is a fifth root. Now a couple things to notice. Fifth root, if you don't tuck the five in there, you're going to end up getting things wrong. Make sure you tuck those in there. I really am going to be super picky. So put the five in there nice and tight. We have both 2 and x, both to the seventh power. Did we all get that? Okay, let's go the other way now. Seven, rewrite this with rational exponents. We're starting with a radical. It's the same thing as a rational exponent. Let's rewrite it. So, 
Is both 7 and both n under the same root? Yes. Yep. Are, is both 7 and n raised to the second power? Yep. It's in parentheses, so we're going to have base 7n in parentheses. Put your fraction, roots go on bottom, threes on bottom, powers on top, just like your flower. Pretty simple, right? All right. I'm going to have you finish 1 through 12. Okay, so we have one over the fifth root. Uh, a lot of you are super close, and a lot of you got it. I'm very impressed that some of you got it. So, first of all, we've got to specify, we've got to look at this and say three is not raised to the second power. Only n squared is raised, I mean, only n is raised to the second power. But they are both under the fifth root. So we're going to put our three and n squared. Now, we're not going to put the 2 on the outside of the parentheses. Otherwise, we'd be raising 3 to the second power. And then roots have got to be on bottom. They're both under the fifth root, so there's a 5 on bottom. Then we put a 1 on top, and that will keep our powers not changing. Very good. A lot of you are really close. The only fix I need to make is this was flipped over a fraction, so this must have been a negative 1 fifth power. Does everybody see that? Very tricky. Okay, good. Okay, we're going to be dealing with different types of roots. We're going to be dealing with even roots and odd roots. So here's an example of some even roots. 2, 4, 6, 8. So the square root, the fourth root, the sixth root, the eighth root. Does everybody understand that those are even roots? An odd root would be an example of there's no such thing as a one root, so starting with cube root, fifth root, seventh root, and so on. Those are odd roots. So I want you to look at what a root really means. Okay, ready? What squared equals 4? 2. What squared equals 4? Not a trick question. 2. Well, if that is true, then by definition, the square root of 4 will be 2. Okay, that is true. But one more thing to think about. What else squared is 4? What, there is something else squared that equals 4. What other number squared equals 4? Negative 2, right? Is it also negative 2 squared 4? Well, if that's true, then by definition, the square root of 4 is also negative 2. So that's why when we take a square root of 4, we need to account for plus and minus 2. Does everybody understand why? Okay. Let's do another one. What to the fourth power equals 16? 2 to the fourth power. Yeah, sorry. 2 to the fourth power equals... 16. Well, if that's true, then the fourth root of 16 must equal 2. Okay, what else to the fourth power? Negative. So really, the fourth root of 16 is plus or minus 2. Does everybody understand? So even roots have plus or minus roots. Yes. Right. Now, what squared equals 16? 4. Well, if that's true, then square root of 16 is... Plus and minus 4. So really plus and minus 4 equal, plus and minus 4 squared equals 16. So if that's true, the square root of 16 is plus and minus 4. That's for even roots. Now let's see about odd roots. Here we go. Okay. Odd roots. What squared equals 8? 2. Now I want you to type in your calculator, negative 2 to the third power. Do we get 8? Type, let's type it in or think about it. We should all our calculators out anyway. Negative 2 to the third power is? Is that 8? No. Okay, so it is not plus and minus 2 then here. Okay, so if 2 cubed is 8 and only 2 cubed is 8, then what's the cube root of 8? 2 and only 2. Does everybody understand? Okay, what cubed equals negative 8? Well, if that's true, that's the only thing, then the cube root of negative 8 must be negative 2. So we did not get an I, correct? We did not get an I. An odd root has, I mean, an odd root that's negative underneath will just have a negative answer. Does everybody understand why? Odd roots, odd roots that have a positive will just have the positive answer. Does everybody understand? Now think about it. We have seen in quadratics, we used to say, you technically say this. The square root of negative 16 is technically plus or minus 4i, correct? Right, everybody? But we're only dealing with real numbers in this unit. So you see how there are no real roots here? Okay, just making sure. All right, here we go. Now turn to the back page. Let's start doing some of these so you don't have so much homework. Okay. 
Find all, number 60, the very back page. Last page, flip to the back, just flip your packet over. Find all the real square roots of each number. Here we go. What's the square root of 400? It says all, so we need all of them. Square root of 400. Good, plus or minus 20. The square root means what squared equals B, okay? Um, what's the square root of negative 196? First of all, try typing it into your calculator. What do you get? Error. Error. Why? Because what is... So technically we're getting, if we want to be technical, are we getting 14i? Yes, so what would the answer be because of what it's asking us? What are the real square roots? So we would say... Not 14. 14 squared doesn't equal negative 196. Is everybody following me? So there are no real square roots of negative 196. Does everybody understand? Okay. What's the square root of 10,000? Good. What's the square root of 0 0.0625? Type it in. Everybody type it in. Good. Plus or minus 0.25. Once again, in the wording it says find all the real square roots, so we need both plus and minus. Okay, let's go to 61. Find all the real cube roots of each number. So the cube root, let's all learn how to type it in your calculator. Ready? Hit the math key, everybody. I'll say that again. On your calculator, hit the math key. Go down to cube root. Do you all see it? We should all be doing it. Hit math. Down to cube root. Okay, the cube root of 216 is... Is it plus and minus 6? No. no, very good. Odd roots only have one solution. Okay, what's the cube root of negative 343? Negative 7. It's totally fine to have an odd root have a negative solution. If it's negative, it'll be a negative answer. Positive, positive. Okay, cube root of that? Negative 0.4 and only negative 0.4. Okay, what about the cube root of all that stuff? Wouldn't it be smart to... Split it up and do the cube root of the top and divide by the cube root of the bottom. Let's be smart about this. What's the cube root of 1,000? 10. So we have a 10 on top and on bottom the cube root of 27 is 3. 10 thirds is our answer. Okay, let's go on to 62. Find all the real, keyword being real, fourth roots. Here we go. We're back to even roots. Fourth root of 81 is? That's real? No. Guys, none. There are no real fourth roots. Right? Yes, I heard yes, I heard you. Thank you, Rodrigo. Right? Cool. Yes, yeah, so I'm gonna teach you that next. So everybody, fourth root of two fifty six. This is what you need to do in your calculator. Everybody ready to follow? Hit a four. Type four. And hit math. Good. Scroll down to the X root. Or there's an X in there, I think. We'll have to think about that. So you'll type in the fourth root and then type 256 and enter. You got? Good. It is plus or minus 4. Now you can check it. It's positive 4 to the fourth 256. It's negative 4 to the fourth 256. Yes. So plus and minus. Okay. Fourth root of 0 0.01. Okay. And then fourth root of 625 would be plus or minus five. Does everybody understand? Okay, then I want you to answer these ones all by yourself. 63, it says find each keyword real root. Find each real root. So there might be two real roots. There might not be any. There might just be one real root. Ready, set, go. Do those ones check with me. I didn't I didn't correct you on, so you better pay attention. What's the square root of 100? What are all the real square roots of 144? Does everybody get that? Now this next one tricks people. Isn't this technically negative one times the square root of 25? Okay, what's the square root of 25? What's negative one times positive five? What's negative one times positive five? Negative five. Okay, one more. What's negative one times negative five? Positive five. So we get plus and minus five again. Yeah, same thing. And then what's the square root of negative 0.01? No real roots. Very good. All right. And cube root of 0 0.001. 0 0.1. What about plus and minus? No. Nope. Good. Even roots? Fourth root, so I think it is 0.3. Okay, cube root of 27 is positive 3. 
Square root of negative 27. Negative 3, square root of 0 0.09, plus or minus 0.3. Okay, we've got it. Awesome. Moving on. Now we're going to simplify radicals that are a lot more advanced. Here we go. This should not be new to you, though. It should not be new to you. Um, okay, so simplifying radicals of, to the nth degree. So I just wrote we have an nth degree and we have something under a radical. What we do is we break it down into its prime factors. Prime means the only thing that multiplies to be that are 1 times itself. So 2 is a prime number because the only things that multiply to be 2 are 1 times 2. Does everybody understand? Okay, so we're going to break these down into its prime factors and pull out groups of size n. So if this is a square root, what size of group are we pulling out? 2, if there's a 3 there, cube root, we'll pull out groups of 3. Does that make sense? Okay, here we go. 23, and this is on your flip to the second page. Okay, is everybody with me? I'm going to pause and make sure everybody's caught up. Is everybody to 23? Okay, let's simplify this. So I, I'm saying, what's the square root of 128k to the third? So we're going to break down 128. Give me some factors. Type in your calculator. 128 divided by, what are some factors? Factor mean what multiply to be it? 4 and 32. Okay, let's go with 4 and 32. But any factors will work because they'll all come out to be the same prime factors. Now let's keep breaking down 4. 2 times 2 and 32 breaks down into b. 4 times 8, okay, not bad. And 4 breaks down into 2 times 2. Don't we need to keep going with 8? 4 times 2, and then 4 breaks down into 2 times 2. Okay, now this is where people start double dipping like crazy, and nobody likes a double dipper. So you're going to hear me say that. What I mean by that is people will do this. Watch, so that you're not a double dipper. Watch. They say, oh, there's a 4, 32, 8, 4, 2, 2, 2, 2, 4, 2, 2, or all that stuff's under my roof. That's not true. We rewrote, their 4 is not there anymore. Didn't we rewrite it as 2 times 2? So if you need to cross these out, do. 32 is not there anymore. We rewrote it as 4 times 8. 8 is not there anymore. 4 is not there anymore. Oh, that 4 is not there anymore. So people will double dip and say there's 2 twos and a 4. You see why that's considered double dipping. Okay, now let's write out k to the third is really k times k times k. Now because it's a, I'm changing colors. Now, because it's a square root, we're pulling out groups of two. Now, here's why. Make sense of why. Okay? Most people just memorize it and don't understand why this makes sense. Isn't two times two four? Yeah. What's the square root of four? Two. So, we're only pulling out a two for those two twos. Or, think of it like this. This is the square root of two squared. Root cancel out power. It's only one two. Does everybody understand now why we only pull out groups? Only pull out one two for those two twos. Okay, moving on. We pull out another 2. One thing we, so we pull out another 2. We're pulling out another 2. Yep. And then moving on. There's 2Ks, correct? We're only pulling out a K. Now what was left under the root? 2 and K. So anything you pull out, you're going to multiply. Anything left underneath, you multiply. There was no addition signs in here. It was all multiplication to start with. You would never add. On the outside is 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8K. And then left underneath the square root was a 2K. Do we have questions? Okay. Now, let's do this next one. 16 breaks down into 4 times 4. I'm going to stop you there. Let's think advancedly. I really will expect you to think advancedly. Don't make your life harder than it needs to be. Should I keep breaking down 4, or is there, isn't there it groups of 2? Groups of 2. So should I just stop there and pull out the 4? Okay. So we'll pull out a 4, and this can't leave the house. There's not two of them. So square root x. Everybody feeling comfortable? Questions? Hey, guys, don't go away because I'm going to make you think more advancedly about this in a second. Okay? Here we go. 25. It's a fourth root. 96 breaks down into... Give me some factors. Four. 
Okay, eight times 12. Let's keep breaking those down because they're groups of four. Eight breaks down into four times three. 12 breaks down into two times six. Six breaks down into... What the heck am I talking about? Fix me. What should this be? Two. Okay. Good point. Right? Yeah, you can't use that calculator. Okay. Four breaks down into two times two. Six breaks down into three times two. Don't double dip. Do not double dip. Six is not there. Four is not there. Eight's not there. Twelve is not there. Okay, pulling out groups of four. So isn't there one, two, three, four twos? Now guess what? If people ask me the weirdest things. I mean, it's not that weird, but people will say, if there's a two right here and a two over here, um, and a two right here and a two right here, isn't there still four twos? Okay, people think they have to be like sitting next to each other. No, they don't. Okay. All right, so we pull out a two. Do I multiply those on the outside? Isn't this two to the fourth? Isn't this the fourth root of two to the fourth? Shouldn't we only pull out a two for the group of four? Right? Okay, just making sure. Now, do not write out 6n. You need to start thinking more advancedly about this. That is back to the secondary math 2 style. I did that to start us out. Let's think about it more densely, guys. We need a group of 4. 6 divided by 4. So how many groups of 4 is there in 6? How many groups of 4 is there in 6? One group, correct? So we're going to pull out 1m, correct? Now how many would be left over if we pulled out 4m's technically? Two left. So there's two remaining underneath the root, correct? So we have our fourth root, left was a 3 times 2, which is 6, and you said there was two m's remaining. So m squared was remaining. Yes. Okay, thank you. Questions? Okay, let's do this next one. Fifth root of negative 96x squared y to the 8. So 90, 96, we've already done, we've already broke it down. So we said 8 times 12, 4 times 12. 2, 2 times 2, um, 6 times 2, 3 times 2. I, once again, don't want to double dip on accident. Okay, pulling out groups of 5 this time, and we have a negative. So won't this, this just be a negative answer on the outside? Odd roots have negative, that are negative have negative answers. Pulling out groups of 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, so I pull out a 2. I pull out a negative. Now x squared, we need how many groups of 5? None. So we have an x squared left underneath. Um, didn't we have a 3, 2 left underneath? Okay, and then y to the 8. How many groups of 5 are there in y to the 8? One group. So we'll pull out one y. And then how many is remaining? If you pulled out five y's technically, three. So y cubed is left. Now let me show you algebra, like, if you needed to. So didn't we just do this technically? What's 8 divided by 5? 1. With a remainder of 5 times 1 is 5. So remainder of 3. So do you see how we have y to the first on the outside and remaining is 3 underneath? Okay, just making sure. Negative answer because it's an odd root. Yeah. Oh, guess what I just did? I made one of the common errors that students make, and I'll correct you on. Was this a square root? No. Tuck that five in there nice and pretty. Good. I'm glad you did because I didn't. And that was bad news. Hey, you would get marked wrong if you did that. You, okay. Are you guys feeling comfortable? Do you need me to keep do one last example? Okay, last one. Here we go. Cube root of negative 448x to the fifth y z cubed. Negative 448. I need some factors. Okay, 28 and 16. 28 is 7 times 4. Is that true? 4 is 2 times 2. 
Six is three times two. Now we're pulling out groups of three. That's not that's not a six. That's a sixteen, right? Okay, four times four. Four times four. Now I'm gonna erase. I'm gonna think advancedly, erase those twos because I'm seeing there's three fours, right? Or we can break down the twos, we'd end up with the same answer. Okay, so we're pulling out groups of three. We pull out a four. Left is a seven. So under our cube root, there's a seven left. X to the fifth, how many groups of three are there in X to the fifth? So pull out X to the first. How many is remaining? We pull out three X's. How many is left to get to X to the fifth? X squared is left underneath. Do we have questions on that? Okay, Z to the third, how many groups of three? One, so we're pulling out of Z, nothing remaining, correct? It came out evenly? Three divided by three is one evenly. So there's a Z on the outside. That's it, right? We put everything that's left. Oh, and a Y. Nope, and then what else do I need to add? I heard something there. Negative, very good. You guys catching me not doing the right thing is perfect. That makes you learn better. Questions? Okay, hey, do 25 to 34, go. Okay, moving on. So now here's the benefit. Here's the benefit. Let's say I took away your calculator and I said to you, simplify 13. So flip back to the front. Now, this would be one of the times when rational exponents would be very hard for us to really think about and simplify this correctly. If I took away your calculator, then you'd have to say you'd have to be able to think about this. So we would say, okay, this is rational exponents. I know a rational exponent is really just a radical. So let's rewrite this as a radical, and then we know easily how to simplify it, like we were just practicing. Does everybody see the benefit? So let's rewrite this. What's my root? Square root. So there's a square root. Does everybody understand? Now we have both 16 and squared to the first power. So isn't anything to the first power just itself? So we have the square root of 16 and squared. And now we know how to simplify it now that we rewrote it as a radical. What's the square root of 16? 4. What's the square root of n squared? What's 2 divided by 2? n to the first. n. Anything left underneath? Nope. So this is our answer. See how much easier this was to simplify once we know how to rewrite it as a radical. Okay, any questions before we move on? Yes. Oh, great question. I'm actually really glad you asked that. So, um... If, unless it says what are all the real roots, we only go with the primary root, the positive answer. But if it said what are all the real roots, it's all in the wording, then we would put plus and minus. Good question. I'm actually really glad you asked that. Um, it just is unnecessary because right now we're just simplifying and that would mean we just go with the primary root. But it, it would be in the wording if it said find all of the roots, we would. Good question. Yes. Absolutely. 14, let's rewrite it and let's think smartly about this. Do not make your life harder than it should be. You would, to simplify this, you'd say, I'm going to rewrite it as a radical. So this is really the square root of both 81 and x to the fourth raised to the third. Now, do not do this the hard way. So let's think about this. Technically, underneath our square root, we have this, correct? We have 81 to the third power times x to the, raise the power to a power and you mold, no, raise the power to a power and you multiply. I'm gonna die on that window. Let's try that again. Raise the power to a power and you x to the 12, guys. Okay. Here we go. Now let's simplify this. Don't make your life hard. Don't actually multiply that out. Then you're making your life hard. 81 to the third power means we really have this. 81 times 81 times 81. X to the 12. Okay, don't you see that there's two 81s? Point of this two. So we'll pull out an 81. Now don't make the mistake of saying, oh, so 81's left. Is Does 81 break down? Well, then you better do it. Nine times nine. Oh, there's another nine we can pull out, correct? And then 12 divided by 2, that means how many groups of 2 is there in 12? 6. 12 divided by 2 is 6. Nothing left. So x to the 6. We pulled everything out. 
81 times 9 is 729. X to the 6. Ding, ding, and we're golden. Questions on that? Okay. Do we need to do this one? Isn't this just the cube root, right, of 64 x to the 6, ooh, x to the 6 raised to the first power. So that's really just the cube root of 64 x to the 6, right? Now simplify it, like all the others. So that's all I'm going to do. I'm going to give you time now to practice check with me. Trial and error. Right now is the time to make mistakes. So I want you working on 13 through 22. Check those off with me. It's really interesting. So it's actually, it's easy. It's just a little rule we have to learn on one extra rule. So, and I'm going to make sense of it for you, for those of you that can comprehend it. So it says, when simplifying even roots, only even roots, square root, fourth root, sixth root, when simplifying even roots, you might need to put absolute values in your answer for certain variables. So the rule is, here's the rule, write it down. Go back, put it by your flower maybe. Even root, if you have an even root, and then in your answer you get an odd exponent, you need to add absolute values around your answer. I'll show you an example. It's only in that exact order. So write down the rule. Even root, odd exponent, you need absolute values. That's the rule. Write it down. Even root, odd exponent, that's the only time we need to add absolute values on our answer. And we only add it for variables, not numbers. Because numbers, I'll explain in a minute. Even root, odd exponent, you need absolute values. Now I'm going to explain why. Do you all understand the rule? Not understand why, but do you understand the rule? Even root, odd exponent, you need absolute values. So look at this so you understand, and then I'll explain why. Do you see? So watch. This is the order, the only order. It's very. This rule is very easy. Is this an even root? Okay, now check your, so we need to check. Do we need absolute values? Even root, did we get an odd exponent as an answer? Yes. yes, so check, check. So we just add absolute values on our answer. That easy, that only, that's the only time you need absolute values in that exact order, even root, odd exponent. For those of you that are like, well, why is that? I'll explain. Try to comprehend it so that you understand why, okay? So, don't we know we're dealing with only real roots in here? So, aren't we going to, aren't all of our roots, what, the square root of 4 won't be positive 2? We're dealing with, it's never going to be a negative answer. If we're just dealing with the primary root. So, think about it. If I have an even root, I'm never going to have something come out negative, correct? Right? So, with the variable... We, now when we have x cubed, let's think about it. If I put negative 2 in here, will my answer come out negative? Negative 2 cubed is negative 8. Will we ever have a negative answer? No. So we put absolute values to just say our answer is always positive. Now think about it. If our answer, let's say it was an even root, and our answer come out x to the fourth, won't that fix any negatives we plug in here? What's negative 2 to the 4th? Positive. So do you see how even roots fix the negative 4? But this odd means that potentially our answer could be negative. So we're just saying it's the positive answer of x cubed. Because we will never come out the square root of something, anything is never going to come out an a negative answer. Now if you're like, I don't understand that, then memorize the rule. Because it's not your thing. That's not your thing. For those of you that get it, then yeah, it should make sense. Even root, odd exponent, you need absolute values. So, once again, do you see how we have an even root? x squared. Will x squared ever be a negative answer? No, so we do not need absolute values. Okay. Here we go, 64. Flip back to the back page. Here we go. Let's simplify these. Let's go through it very quickly because we should be getting really quick at these. Ready? What's the square root of 81? What's the square root of x to the fourth? x squared. Let's check to see if we need absolute values. Is it an even root? Is it an odd exponent? So we do not need absolute values. That's never going to be negative, so our answer is good. Moving on. Is everybody good? Let's do the next one. What's the square root of 121? And the square root of y to the 10. 10 divided by 2 is? Okay, let's check. Even root? Odd exponent? We need absolute values. 
just on the white. Numbers, so like 11 is always positive. Does that make sense? So 11 is always positive, so we don't need to put absolute values. Does that make sense? There's a constant 11, it's good. Okay, let's do another one. The cube root of 8. Cube root of 8, g to the 6. g squared, correct? Nothing left under our root. Do we need absolute values? Is it an even root? So we do not need absolute values, because can't we have negatives as answers for odd roots? Okay. Moving on, cube root of 125 is 5. X to the 9th, cube root of X to the 9th is X to the... Okay, let's check even root. So we do not need absolute values. Negative answers are completely fine, so we don't need absolute values. Okay, next one. The square root of 25 is... Five. What's the square root of x plus two all to the fourth? How many x plus twos do we have? Four. So how many groups of two do we have? Good. X plus two squared. Now let's check if we need absolute values. Even root. Odd exponent. We don't need absolute values. The squares will take care of all the negatives for us. Is everybody making more and more sense of why we need absolute values? Okay. Good. We guys are so smart. Number this one. Let's split it up. Let's look at it in sections. The cube root of 64 is? Yeah. It is okay, 4. That's true. Cube root of x to the 9th. x to the 3rd. 9 divided by 3 is 3. No thing remaining. And the cube root of 3, 43 is 7. Let's check. Even root? Nope. So, nope, we don't need absolute values. Does everybody understand? That's it. It's only in that exact order. Even root, odd exponent, absolute value. Sweet. Okay, now I want you guys to do these ones. Check with me on what you get. Actually, how about I just do this? Finish 64 on the back. 64 through 66. Finish those up. Do not skip 65 and 66. Those are the easiest problems on there. Just because they're story problems doesn't mean we skip them. Literally, you plug something in to a formula. That is it. So do not skip them. 64 through 66. Then what I want you to do once you've completed that and checked them off with me, go back to problems 23 through 34 and add absolute values when you need. Now, understand something. I need to say this because I didn't say this last hour and then everybody was asking me. Let's just do one example of that. Everybody will go to problem number 25. We got the answer, and this is going to help you. We got 2n, fourth roots of, this is 20, is this 25? I'm doing, yeah. Okay, 2n, fourth root of 6n squared. Okay, let's check if we need absolute values. Look at the original problem. Was it an even root? Did we get an odd exponent in our answer? N to the first is odd. So we need absolute values. Guys, let me say something. You never put absolute values underneath the radical, okay? So it's only on the outside that we need them. Okay, ready, set, go. So do those problems and then go back and add absolute values when needed. X is to the first power, so that's an odd exponent, even root. So you need this. Now, let me make, I'm going to fix you in the future if you do this. Is it not wrong? But since they're both in absolute values, we just go like this. X, Y cubed, and that's good. It's not that you're wrong if you write it like this, but this is just a lot prettier. Okay. 